<laughs> What's up everyone? It's the bottled water guy. I don't have any water with me of any sort, so uh, call me the dehydrated guy today. But I wanted to get this video in before the holidays. It's called Bands That Deserved Better, talking about one of my favorite bands that is no longer around anymore. This is the third one in this series. First one we talked about Balancing Composure, then we talked about Transit, now we're going on to Kayak Jones. Who's Kayak Jones? Great question. Well, they're not Chandler or Tasman Jones, and not even Osmosis Jones. They're Kayak Jones, and they founded in 2015, stopped being a band in 2021. They were around for about six to seven years. They're from Dubuque, Iowa. Kayak Jones, four guys. Tyler Wayne Zumhoff, the vocalist. Brandon Blakely, the drummer. He's now in Hot Mulligan. Zach Keenum on bass, and then Scott Miller on the guitar. He used to be in this band called Chase the City. They had a video put out in 2011 that's kind of corny emo stuff. I think it's funny. But there was also an article right when Kayak Jones started being a band from Scott Miller's high school. They kind of wrote an article about him. And I thought it was funny that they were talking about him like, oh, he's such a great alum. And even though he like left school and to do this band thing, he's still so cool. And then they asked him like, what do you miss about Galena High School, which I guess is where he attended. And he was like, nothing. I don't miss school. So I just thought it was funny that they published that in the school newspaper that he went. But yeah. Kayak Jones got their start in 2015, released their first EP. It was just three songs. It was called Drugs. It's got kind of a corny cover, but it is what it is. I Could Make You Care is the most popular song. It shows a lot of promise, but it's not fantastic. It came out in June of 2015. The band played a few shows around the Iowa area and the Yakmobile, which is what they called their band van. Then in 2016, they released the standalone single Lesson in June. Then in December, they released their next EP called Flawed, and this is what really got them some attention. Had some very emotional delivery from Zumhoff, the vocalist. Memoir is arguably the best song. When they played their uh, release show for this EP, Hot Mulligan was actually on it. So if anyone went to that show, please let me know. That would probably be one of the sickest shows to go to. And the band continued uh, trying to get their name out there in 2017. They released yet another EP, their third one called Sort Out Your Head. It the, came out right after the lead single for this EP came out called Matter. It's probably their best track they had done up to this point. It's super emo, but it really got them some attention. The song 1221, like the date, December 21st, that's another good one too. And they actually say, sort out your head. So you hear the EP title as a lyric in that. That's kind of cool. In 2018, more touring for Kayak Jones with a variety of different bands. Then in 2019, they went on this massive spring tour with Hot Mulligan, Belmont, and Future Teens. I actually went to that show that they did when they came around Minnesota, which is where I was living at the time, and that was an amazing show, really got me into Kayak Jones. So when they released their debut album in April called You Swear It's Getting Better Every Day, I was like, oh wow, let's check this out. So yeah, the opening track on that debut album is called Good Quality Work. It opens with tons of emotion, almost too much emotion, because he literally starts out going, her fingers were interlaced but broken and it's like what dude and then after that everything else is great on it it literally has a terrible first line or at least a terrible delivery in my opinion and then the rest of it is fantastic it opens with tons of emotion it's the first track the band recorded for this and they said that after that it just kind of snowballed from there and it, everything went well as far as production this band though i have a lot of uh respect for them because i read that they had to do a lot of the work themselves being on not a label they had to kind of do everything themselves to get this record out there it was recorded, mixed, and mastered in New Jersey. It's a beautiful blend of emotional vocals, pop punk riffs, and great production. So it has kind of a soft and heavy sound at the same time. You can really exemplify that on the second track called Nose Blunt. <laughs> Funny song title. Has great lyrics like, the money's not enough and the drugs aren't a stable crutch. And then the chorus, smother me and all the things I've done wrong, anxiety and pressure in my lungs. Excellent chorus. It's got a little soft outro. This band is firing on all cylinders for the first two tracks. Track three, Lonely Codependent, more of the same. Kind of reminds me of Future Teens, who they toured with. Very vulnerable lyrics that are easy to shout back, like, well, my head's a mess, but you wouldn't know that. It has a video too, a music video if you want to check it out. Lonely Codependent, extremely catchy and keeps the momentum going on this album. More talk about anxiety and some more shouty lyrics and a great riff as well on the fourth song, Running Blind. Better productions on the vocals, and this band could have been way bigger, but I just, it's a solid debut album. I love the shakiness though, the vocal delivery that you hear from Zoomhoff. I just think, you know, with more practice and more bigger production on a record label, man, this band could have been massive. They're just already showing so much potential on this debut album. The lyric, I'll lie dormant until I decompose, cold just like the snow, I just gave up hope. Very Midwest. The next song, Foolish, has a very transit sound to it. Kind of reminds me of the transit era of Listen and Forgive or Young New England. 
has kind of a same tempo as all the songs before it, maybe a little slower, and shouty lyrics about a girl. You know how I feel about those, and everybody in pop who likes, you know, sad boy pop punk loves shouty lyrics about a girl. Well, you came to the right place. They're on full display here, thanks to Kayak Jones. Then the next song, Good Enough, it's a short, less than two minute song. It's kind of a slower stomp beat, kind of running this one. Got great drumming supporting it. The vocals are shouty. I say, I'm getting kind of harsh on Zumhoff's vocals, but he improves these on every release. So, you know, he's got that sweet spot of kind of being emo and emotional, but also trying to be hard and kind of have like a post-hardcore influence to it too. I think with more albums, man, Zumhoff would have just gotten to the top of his game. But again, this is a fantastic album, hence why we're talking about it. Time and Place, the next track, unbelievable. It could be a youth fountain song, and that's some of the highest praise I can give. They talk about feeling like a stranger in your own clothes. The chorus is about a breakup, and it just makes you want to mosh or dance all at the same time. The band's favorite track is the next one called Rusted. It's probably the most different song on the album. It almost points to a new direction the band could have gone in. It's got some odd production too, but honestly, it's a nice change of pace, and it keeps the album from getting boring, even though it's not my personal favorite. Then to close it out, the final two tracks. The penultimate track is called The Mess I've Made. It's outstanding. It's everything the band does well pulled together in one song. It's a great mix of everything they have done on the previous songs. It also features the album title as the lyric, the you swear it's getting better every day. If they can look back on one thing they did extremely well, it would be this album, obviously, but the mess I've made, I mean, that's one of the best things they've done. Lonely Codependent might be the catchiest on here, but the mess I've made and time and place, Nose Blunt as well, those are my favorites. Then the final song, Valediction, is a slow burner. It's got some different kind of vocals, massive cinematic clothes, and it ends with the lyric, I didn't see the light in me until now. Wow, what a massive statement from this band. Unbelievable debut album. It had some flaws in it, but it still made my 2019 album of the year list. I believe it was 11, so I ranked it very highly. Like I said, I lived in Minnesota then. I used to walk around the lake when I got home super late from work, which is, you know, I lived in this lake town in Minnesota, and it just was a nice emotional release to the day. I think I listened to this album and the new Tiny Moving Parts album, Breathe, or at least it was new at the time, so much that year. I think 2019, those were like my two most played albums if you just looked at specific, just plays specifically. After that, the band played Excellency Music Fest in Michigan that summer. Then in the fall of 2019, they toured with Home Safe. In 2020, they had more plans to keep on touring on this wonderful album that people were just starting to get into, but the pandemic kind of killed it. And I think 2020, 2021, this band was just kind of waiting around, wondering if they could get back out to tour. And I don't know if financial reasons or what else would have made them break up. But at the end of 2021, early 2022 is when this band announced that they had broken up. However, they did play a late 2022 Hot Mulligan holiday show, but that's honestly all we've heard from the band. A lot of talented musicians make, made up Kayak Jones. Lots of potential was there. The band honestly deserved better. They literally had all the talent, I think, with a label, even better producers, and just a couple more albums in them. This band could have been one of the top bands in the scene. And you can tell that, though, because Brandon Blakely is with Hot Mulligan on the drums. Uh, Scott Miller was in a band before. I don't know if he's in a band now. But I would love to see Tyler Zumhoff in a band. Like I said, he really came leaps and bounds with those vocals, and they're some of the most emotional delivery. If somebody can just hone those to perfection, he could be a fantastic vocalist in this scene. Kind of like uh, a lot of dispute. It took them a while to finally get those vocals right, but I think Jordan's vocals eventually with the right producer sounded good. So that's kind of what you just needed to do was kind of shave off the little extra emotion of Kayak Jones, and they would have been absolutely perfect in that medium spot. I'd love to see them come back. I mean, I guess that's not out of the question. They could always come back. They had 68,000 monthly listeners on Spotify last time I checked. You also can go on Spotify and check out everything Kayak Jones has done from the first EP that I mentioned to all the way to the newest stuff, like basically all their songs. Tyler Zumhoff put them all up there, made sure they were all on there, and put them in one playlist. So they're all there at your disposal. Check out Kayak Jones if you haven't. Again, they may not be your cup of tea, but if you like anything pop punk, alt rock, indie, emo kind of stuff, definitely Kayak Jones should be on your radar. And I wish they had been earlier because they're just one of those bands that, you know, they had it all there, but it just didn't seem to take off for them. And unfortunately, that's the case for many bands. That's why I'm going to continue this series in the new year. I love it. I think there's so many bands that deserved better. So thank you for listening to me talking about Kayak Jones here. Even though Kayak Jones had a very hard name to tell people about, I would say that about bands like the three exclamation point band known as Chick Chick Chick. I honestly don't tell people about them because I don't want to have to go through all that. There's also another band called Mannequin P-Word. 
<laughs> if we're doing the PG version. And uh, yeah, I love that band too, but it's just hard to tell people about it because you don't want to have to say that phrase out loud. And Kayak Jones is kind of a silly phrase to say out loud, but uh, even though it was kind of silly, I didn't mind saying it to my friends and I would see the smirk or the look on their face and I'd be like, yeah, I know you think that's silly, but it's a silly band name, a seriously good band. Check them out. And that's what I'm telling you guys. Silly band name, not a band anymore, but check out Kayak Jones. They were a band that deserved better. That's the last band that deserved better video of the year. Basically, all we got left for the rest of the year is talking about the top albums and EPs. I love to do that video closer around to Christmas once everything has come out or been released for the year. So yeah, stay tuned for that in the coming weeks. That'll take me a while to make and come out with. So you might not see a few videos for a while, but yeah, stay tuned to this channel. Like and subscribe so you'll know when those videos do come out. And thank you guys for anybody that's even wasted a second of their 2023 watching this.